This is my vlog channel, and I feel morally tormented about it. Tormented by the fact that vloggers, myself included, typically only show the very happy-go-lucky moments of life. Especially when recently I felt like a worse version of myself. Unkind, rude, snapping at people I love, kind of at my wits end with myself. And it's not something I want the internet to have to watch. You come here for a good time. But at the same time, it feels dishonest to make a YouTube channel about my life and never represent that very flawed part of me. So, for one time, and one time only, I decided to wait until I was in a totally rotten mood, and then I started filming. Of course, this won't capture my worst moments. They get a lot worse than this, but these certainly aren't my best. Deepest apologies for the following video. I'll tell you what, right now, I'm in a bad mood. I'm in a bad mood. The coffee is brewing so loud right now. Nothing is working out correctly. I'm sorry. One thing that bothers me about YouTube is that like, obviously when you watch vlogs and stuff, they mostly only show themselves like being happy and doing fun stuff. And like, for me, I feel no need to whitewash my life. I would like to sit. I would like to not be bent over though. Should I just sit on the floor? This is worse. This is worse. I feel no need to whitewash my life. I have no desire to appear my best. If anything, I feel like I lead with my worst. But on YouTube, I don't show me in all my worst moods. Not because I'm trying to hide it, but it's like when you're in a terrible mood, the last thing I want to do is work. It's just like me dealing with my own mood. It's not ever wanting to hide it. I have terrible cramps right now too. I just feel mad. Anyway, so I'm mad now, so I'm just in a bad mood. And I was like, I'm just gonna film it one time. The coffee is so loud, I'm sure. I went and I tried to film a video a video that I've been I've been working up to this video literally for months I've been like taking notes and like preparing my thoughts around this video and I was gonna film it in a park too and it was gonna be really beautiful and I got up and I freaking did my hair I did my freaking mermaid waves on my hair Ugh. and I was so excited I went at the right time to get the right lighting and da 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 and you know what? No one at the park would let me film. And it's not their fault. I don't own the park. It doesn't belong to me. But I was furious at them. Like, I was furious. There's one lady just standing, screaming for like hours. And then there's the cars going and there's the highway. And then someone comes up with a chainsaw. I finally found a corner after like two hours. I'm holding a knife right now. I don't feel safe around me. Oh, and the hill, like the slope of the earth was fucking with me because it, I couldn't get the tripod at the right height for my face. And finally found like a bench in a quiet corner where the light was correct and nobody was bothering me. The lady, the lady was far enough that she could continue yelling, but I couldn't hear her. And this a dude came up on his bicycle and sat right next to me and started, you know, shooting up something. He was doing something uh, nefarious, I, just right there in the open, which is fine. You know, I'm doing it, but like, can you do it on another bench? <sighs> now I'm gonna have to film tomorrow, maybe, if I can even get it done tomorrow. Whatever, it doesn't matter. None of it matters. It's just like I'm gonna be fine. Oh! Oh! And then. I'm still covered in mosquito bites. I'm getting mosquito bites like it's nobody's business. They must be living in my apartment now. Excellent. I have roommates. Covered in mosquito bites, so I was like, well, I'm just gonna cover myself in mosquito repellent then, so they stop biting me. And then I fell. I fell because it like oiled up the floor and I slipped on my newly surgical, surgery knee and I went into like a low squat like split, probably the worst thing I could have done and that really got me mad. That really got me mad. It really hurt. It was very upsetting. Oh, oh. I hadn't eaten anything because I was out there in the fields trying to work. I'm gonna murder people. I have to go. I have to go. So I hope you like seeing me in a bad mood. Ugh, I'm probably not doing this again. There are too many people in this city. There are too many people in almost in all the cities. We don't need this many people. I really like DC, but if I go to park, anytime I go to park, I'm just like, you guys are dumb. You guys are so dumb that you all think you have to be here. Same as me, I'm not immune to this. Like we think this is the place we have to be. We have to be here so bad that there's not even room for us to live. 
because you can't park. When I first moved here, I accrued thousands of dollars in parking tickets. I had my car towed twice. It's just too many people. It's too many people. I don't know, I'm mad at the city today. Oh, more importantly, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get my armpits lasered. Kill them, kill the hair off, get, get it done. Get it out of here. I don't want to do it anymore. You better drive or I'm going to hit you. Thank you. I'm done with armpits. I'm done with people. I'm done with parking and I am done with armpits. I won't be, I won't be having it any longer. It's starting to occur to me. I wonder, does me in a bad mood and me in a good mood look kind of the same? I know I'm screaming both times, but in one of them I'm having fun and in one I'm really angry. I'm genuinely angry. I'm angry at the city. I'm angry at my armpits. I'm angry at the cars. I'm angry for that dude wearing a khaki shirt. Where do you even find that? I'm going to Vishka Skincare in Arlington. Vishka Skincare. Where the hell is it? Thirty-one. I forgot how to use an elevator. Okay. Close before I slap you. Thank you. Uh, 31A. Is this gonna put me in a better mood? That's not it. Hello? 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 How are you? Thank you. Okay, cool. Wait, what do I do? Um, this is your first time? Yeah. So sorry. So on the chair, and then you just get underneath here. Okay. Just, um, Am I completely you, naked? To make it easier? Yeah, yeah. just do it. <laughs> and, um, why do you, if you no, that's fine. I just don't want to do something that you're like, that wasn't necessary. Okay, oh no. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Somehow this has put me in a better mood. Why? Why? Okay, I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Okay, uh, that was not nearly as bad. First of all, I thought I was so scared to go get the laser. I threw in a couple extra additions. I, I bulked up the package. I got a little bit of bikini lasering. Cause you know what? I don't need to be doing that shit all the time either. You know, I'm not liberated enough to evolve out of that and to just be fine with who I am. I'm not there yet. I'm not, I'm not gonna get there. I'm not a liberated woman. I hate waxing. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It is so painful to me. And I have a very high pain tolerance. Usually the things that people find painful, I do not find painful. Tattooing, psh, working out, exercising, like I'm so good at pushing myself through pain, but something happens with waxing. And I don't, it's not good to me. It's not good to me. And I think it's much more painful to me than it is to the average person, which it already sucks, period. It hurts so much that I would drive to the waxing salon, sit in the parking lot like 10 minutes early and take two shots and then go in and get waxed because that does dull the pain. I'm over it. I'm over it with the armpits. I'm over it with waxing. So I bulked up my package a little bit when, when I went in to get laser today. Did a couple extra spots. And girl, it was like nothing. It was nothing. And hose me telling me, Hose be telling me beforehand that the laser maybe hurts more. People said really negative stuff about the laser. And I was like, well, no one else other than me thinks that waxing is the worst. Like people don't like waxing, but like I, I have to be drunk to do it. But people were really scared of the laser. So I was like, oh, oh, that's probably not going to be good news for me. It's probably going to really hurt. Girl, it was nothing. It's like very hot. There were a few times maybe I flinched. But this is the thing. Tips from my dad. Not tits from my dad. Tips from my dad is that the body has a very hard time telling the difference between um, extreme temperatures and pain. So I just laid there and was just like, this is just really hot. It's just really hot. No one cares. How much can I talk about sensations on my body? A long time. I have a lot of hair, okay? So imagine this hair, this hair everywhere. This is gonna take me a lot of sessions, but that was fine. It was fine. I'm interested to Report the results back to you in the coming months. Very exciting times. Okay, I have to go, I have to go. I feel like I'm sweating in a weird way. I ran out of deodorant, now I'm just smelling. I don't know.
don't know if that's important for you guys to know. I have so much new art and stuff on the walls. Don't look at it, don't look at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do like a whole updated living room tour, I think. I have a bunch of new stuff in there that I wanna show. I think I need to do like a living room tour. One new thing I'm very excited about, I just got this in the mail today. You guys will recognize this if you've watched um, the video for a while. This is a poem that my friend Sarah, Sarah Ransahoff, I talk about her all the time. She just like shared a poem that she wrote with me one time and I was like, that's beautiful. Can you please write it down and send it to me? So she just like scribbled it out on here and drew a couple like little doodles of cats. It's just so full of like life and experience to me. And it's also like full of my friendship with my friend because I just like asked her to jot it down for me when she was texting me about it. Yeah. I love her. It was really hard to find a frame for it because it's square. And I went thrifting and I got like a temporary square frame, but I put something else in there now and I really wanted to get this properly framed. I wanted to give it proper, proper context to hype it up. And now I feel like it's so, like it was born to be in here. I did this via frame bridge. This frame is the Walnut Mini. And then I added a brass plate to the bottom. I'll tell you what, like I can't afford to have every single item in my home professionally framed. I like to use frame bridge to mix into pieces that I've thrifted or something and then it elevates everything. Like it took this like little scrap piece of paper and made it to like a beautiful little like heirloom and then it's super affordable if you haven't used frame bridge before. They just like make it easier and affordable to get stuff framed at home. You don't have to leave your house. You just send them in whatever. The other thing I'm gonna frame is a gift for someone. I really like to use it for gifts. I feel like we all have those people that were like, what do I buy you? Especially for my parents, like anything I spend money on, they were, they're not even gonna use it. I got a gift, Elizabeth, if you're watching this, stop. You need to stop watching. I got a gift for my sister Elizabeth for her birthday, which I just sent in and they're framing now. Elizabeth, get out of here. It's a copy of The Winter's Tale, play by Shakespeare from 1905. And it's like, it's like this small. The book is this small. I found it in antique stores from 1905 and it's The Winter's Tale. And I know that's one of her favorite plays. She's also writing a book about Shakespeare right now, about like the Shakespeare authorship controversy, which look into that stuff if you haven't. I wanted to give it to her for her birthday, but I didn't want to just like give her a random book whatever like it needs to be propped up so i'm getting it framed and it's gonna be like open to a page with a, like a, a meaningful quote i'm so excited so you can frame objects if they're not too deep you can frame photos all of the prints photos artwork that's just like sitting on your phone they frame bridge can frame anything wait what's my point i love frame bridge so i asked them to sponsor today's video they're sponsoring today's video if you want to check them out you can get started today frame your photos or send somebody the perfect gift Go to framebridge.com and use promo code Caroline Winkler to save an additional 15% off of your first order. So all you do is you go to framebridge.com. I'm like literally doing it on my phone as we speak. Upload your photo or item or just mail it into them. They'll send you all like the supplies to mail it in or you can drop it off in person. New York, DC, Atlanta, Philly, Boston, and Chicago if you wanna go by in person. And you can preview your image online and like test it in different frames. They also have designers you can work with if you're just like, I don't know what frame to put this in. And then the experts at Framebridge custom frame your item and they just ship it right to your door and it's ready to hang. Prices start at 39 bucks. Everything ships for free, it's great. If you've tried to get something professionally framed before, it's like hundreds of dollars. It's actually such a racket. So Framebridge makes it way more accessible. I don't know why it's taken this long, but God bless them. So I gotta figure out where to put this guy. I want it somewhere where people can see it and enjoy it and read it. So I don't want it in like a private space. Yeah. I can make people look at it on the toilet. That would be fun. I'll keep you posted. Okay, I'm doing something crazy right now. I'm driving around and I've seen this f***er who I've seen on dating apps. My sister and I have both seen him. This dude scooting around on a scooter in a suit. This dude, I have seen this guy on dating apps and Elizabeth has as well. We always match with the same damn dudes. This is what happened. He had something in his in his profile about The Sopranos and I loved The Sopranos. I watched The Sopranos. Is my camera dirty? Probably, it always is. You know what? I would like to receive an award for having consistently the lowest quality technical production on YouTube. A hundred percent. The audio is always bad. The video is always smudged. No one likes the lens I use. You know what? I'm, I'm not not trying. I do try, but I'm at capacity. I don't think it's good. It's going to stay like this for the most part. 
I also want it to be better, but I also, I would like to be taller too. And neither are gonna happen. Okay, this dude, he had something in his profile about The Sopranos and you know, I started talking to him about The Sopranos. The Sopranos is a great show. And um, I think he asked me about the ending in The Sopranos. <laughs> The Sopranos is known, for people who've never even watched the show, it's known for having famously one of the most ambiguous endings to a, a TV series. It is known for having been frustratingly ambiguous. That's, that's what's the fact. That's the fact, is it's known to and agreed to be frustratingly ambiguous. And we got into the discussion about like the, fi the, the end. See, I'm so upset right now. We got into this uh, discussion. I'm just fucking trying to entertain him and his interests. I don't give a shit. I don't need to talk about this. I, mean, I think he asked me even, what do you think about the ending? And I was like, oh, I thought it was a great ending. I thought it was great that it was ambiguous. That didn't upset me. Like it ended on a note that's true to life. You don't know what's coming next. Whatever happens next isn't, the truth like the truth exists regardless this is what their life is their life is full of stress you don't know what's around the corner that's the truth to me i don't i don't need a specific plot point to make me sleep well at night i was fine with it being ambiguous that wasn't upsetting to me a lot of people were very upset by it and he was just like well i don't think it was ambiguous i think it was pretty clear i think it was pretty clear that he died i think it was pretty clear well, how the hell was it clear to only you? You're the son of God. You have some special power where it was only clear to you and to everyone else. There was a like global wide discussion on Reddit on how it was ambiguous. That's the only thing people agreed on is that it was ambiguous. And he was so angry and he knew the ending of The Sopranos. He got some special insider information. Somebody, so he, you, are you a writer for The Sopranos? You must be because you seem to know. You seem to know more than the writers knew. Even when I'm bowing down to your interest to make you feel heard and seen and included, you gotta shove something down my throat. What? Well, I think it was pretty obvious. Shut up. Okay, I'm not gonna fight with him over that. I was just like, oh, okay. I'm not gonna fight with him over that. Uh, it's so special for you to know everything about The Sopranos. You dumb idiot. I wasn't trying to one-up you. I gave like the most like generous accepting answer possible. And then there he was, there he was in the flesh. Riding a scooter in a full suit. I need to do like a major clothing clean out. I wear about eight pieces every day. What what sweatpants do you think I'm in, right? I wear the same stuff pretty much every day. I don't need more clothes than my storage can reasonably hold. Yeah, I don't have a real system for this, honestly. Maybe at some point I'll do like a video on it, um, but I would have to do some research and gather ideas from other people because I actually don't have like a great system for going through clothes specifically. I do do it, I get rid of stuff a lot, but like, I don't think I could articulate this system, but if you have rules for that, comment them. It's just gonna be hanky-panky, I think. <laughs> I don't even wanna do this, I'm already bored. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I decided that I do have a system. This is my very basic system, which is not gonna blow anyone's mind. I just did keep, like definitely keep, give away, and maybe. So it's all like different basics I own, but like they don't fit quite right or they're stretched out. I literally don't wear them and they kind of give me an ick. They're going away. This is my keep pile. And even this, I could probably dumb down a bit more. This is like 20 shirts which I feel like actually is not that much, but this is pretty much what I wear. And then I have like four more here, which are either nostalgic and I'm not gonna give them away, even though I never wear it, or they're for summer and I need to put them like under the bed with summer clothes, cause I don't have enough room to have summer and winter out. So that's my, I guess that's my system. I did like a definitely keep, maybe, and a definitely give away. And then I put the summer stuff. And then with the maybe, I decided to give them all away. So that's what I'm gonna do. Cool. Okay. I'm gonna keep going.
Oh my God. I could smell that all day. I'm doing my hair. I'm using this tool. This is like mermaid hair curler crimper thing, which I ended up getting because my little sister has like wavy hair and she likes to curl and stuff. And so I got her one for her birthday coming up. And then I was looking at this tool and I was like, I also want this. I have to go film a video today. I'm gonna go film my video. It's probably already out, I assume. A loneliness video, like dealing with being alone and how like you can be alone without being lonely. And I don't know, it's something I talk a lot about in my vlogs. And then one of my very good friends suggested that as a video idea to me. And she was like, I would be interested in hearing more about that. Um, Cause you talk about it a lot. And she, she's one of my best friends and she knows how much time I spend alone <laughs> and how much I like it. Um, and so I really appreciate the idea. And it was something that like people make video ideas, suggestions all the time, but only do it if it's something that I'm like, oh, I feel like I have something I, to say, something that like I care about. So I'm gonna go film this. I tried to film yesterday, but I'm gonna do take two today and hopefully do a better job. I think I'm literally gonna go film in my parents' backyard. Ooh, that's probably burnt my hair by now. I just finished shooting, it went so much better. I was shooting that like loneliness video. I was in such a better mood today. And like your energy is so important when making any video, even for making a vlog. Obviously like the footage of me screaming in a bad mood is like, it's not ideal. I was in such a better mood today. I want it to be like a really hopeful, like uplifting discussion about like spending time alone in your 20s, 30s, whatever, and not like a downer. So I feel way better about that. Um, and then I got home and I just got, girl, I just got some fabric samples. I'm still building my like fabric sample collection. Also look how many I got. This is from the Etsy craftsman person who makes the curtains that are in my bedroom. I've used them in other projects as well because they're such high quality. I think it's like 10 foot ceilings in there and I got a custom length of like 10 feet and I think it was like a hundred bucks a curtain. It was something like that. It was so much more reasonable than like a bunch of like, you know, curtains from West Elm or something. You can get so expensive, but they're really high quality. They're linen and they don't have a ton of patterns, but if you do solid color or like they sent me some stripes as well. I was considering the colors for an upcoming project I'm doing actually for an office space. And I couldn't quite tell what the color was online. And so I ordered the samples and I'm so glad I did. I paid like 10 bucks maybe to get all the samples. Look how pretty these are. Oh, so many. Like this is, this is candy. You know what I mean? These are beauties. This is, what's in my bedroom? This I think is the one I have in my bedroom. Forest green. So pretty. There's a couple good stripes in here. Yo, so pretty, what the hell? I love seeing them together, I just love them. I love these guys, they're my children. They're my children. They're all these like sweet muted <laughs> colors and stuff. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I have nothing more to say, I just really wanted to show you guys my, my colors. <laughs> so those are here. The end.